Good evening, folks. This may be the last time we see this Jupiter animation unless there is a very good reason to bring it back. In its likely retirement video, let's take a walk back at how it became such an important piece of our understanding the future of climate science. The electrodynamics of Earth have been described for far longer than it has been attempted to model into the surface energy budget. Even with the modern acceptance of the global electric circuit effect on pressure, clouds, and temperature, there's been little attempt to integrate it properly into climate analyses. This was a huge issue in our book, especially since the peer-reviewed literature supports such inclusion. And then the field lurched forward with discussion of electrical disruptions that traveled from high and mid-latitude down to the equator, and in a much more mature way than we've seen in years past. This is a huge thing that is missed, by even that 2% of climatologists who actually use the official solar particle and cosmic ray forcing data sets. And when Jupiter was shown to have its entire atmosphere heated in this way, behind the scenes, you can't imagine how many papers got rejected for no reason other than showing how well the Earth works this way and the threat that posed to modern climate science. And then, came the official calling out of energy transfer through the ionosphere, from the auroras to the equator in wave-like fashion. And as the details of those electrical disruptions are better understood, from the mechanisms of action to the timeline lag of forcing, our longtime animator, Xavier Thunders, has made it so we don't have to use the one for Jupiter anymore. Again, this is what is being missed about the solar particle forcing, which prefers entry at the polar region. They can't put it in the global electric circuit if they can't get it everywhere. But if you can get it everywhere, down to the equatorial electrojet, maybe you can. And while we're cleaning up the odds and ends of how climatologists can actually make use of solar particle forcing and solar wind data and CME impact information, please, I hope they also remember to include the magnetic coupling with the IMF, the interplanetary magnetic field from the sun. It was almost insulting to the field of climate science to see it worded as such in an AGU main publication. And these are the magnetic connections between everything in the heliosphere and the sun, and that includes the Earth. And they tend to thread out through the heliospheric current sheet, the wavy, rippling electric field denoting the solar wind magnetic reversal point in the solar system. You remember this, the same threads in the galaxy that go through the galactic current sheet. Anyway, hopefully we can recall just this morning in the show we saw them hit the IMFBX once again. You will find a ton of this in our book, and from now on, the key way to show this aurora to equator wave, the electrical disruption traveling and heating towards the equator, will be this. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.